So without further ado, I will pass it off to Dr. DeWitt and Stephen. I have to say it, um, and I'm wondering if it's been included in your material. Are you Dr. Do It? <laughs> uh, yes, I am Dr. Do It. It's really funny. When I was in grade three, the kids would make fun of me and be like, oh, Stephen, do it. And then, uh, yeah, this is my, my world now. So um, it is my world, and it's something that I'm, I'm really excited to uh, to share with you and share with your community. So um, first of all, let me say thank you um, for allowing me into the sacred space of the sisterhood. So I just acknowledge that um, it is a sacred space and me walking in as a man and being in that space, it's something that is an honor and also humbling. So thank you for that. And it's not lost on me that uh, I'm in a sisterhood uh, as a man. So thank you very much for that. Um, the, the first question that usually comes up, and you may have had this, um, or actually first, let me welcome you into my car right now. You may be noticing it being like, what is Stephen doing? So normally, and I wish you could see it, I have my notebook propped up here. I have my iPad down here. I have a microphone set up. Um, so it is my partner's uh, birthday today. So we had this plan. So we're at uh, Niagara Falls. If I turn, I'm not sure, if I turn over there, like are the falls, like right there. So I'm like literally right here. Um, and it's her birthday. But when Dr. Tara asked me, Stephen, can you be part of this? Um, you know, speaking to women and working with women is something that I love and I'm so passionate about. And my girlfriend was like, no, Stephen, go do your thing. I'll go for a walk and meditate and write and do the things that she needs to do. So, um, so welcome to my car and thank you for welcoming me into your community. Um, one thing I will say, Anne, when you were doing the movement pieces um, was really awesome. And I did the Vortex Revival, but I did not do my radiant circuits because a man by himself looking at his phone, um, touching his pubic bone, not a good look. And there's, there's people walking by. Anyways, it was fun. Um, so I love what I do. And one of the first questions that people ask is like, Stephen, what the heck is a sexologist? And you're in great company. My mom still asks me that question. My dad doesn't want to know the answer. But as a sexologist, my commitment is that all people live a sexually empowered life and they have relationships that work. Um, my superpower, I like to say, is making the uncomfortable comfortable. Um, what that looks like in my day-to-day -day life is I have a private practice where I work with individuals and couples and help them transform and create the sex life that they want. Um, I also, well, I used to do a lot of speaking at conferences and conventions, but these days it's, uh, I'm doing lots of virtual stuff like this. This is uh, something that I love to do. And uh, then I lead retreats. Um, so it's the Sex Life Unleashed experience. So I do that both in person, but these days it's online. So that's what I do. Um, I am actually trained. So I have a, a master's of public health with a specialization in human sexuality. I did my clinical placement um, at a place called the Hassle Free Clinic in Toronto. And that's really where I cut my teeth in accepting and working with people, however they choose to express themselves, whatever is going on in their life. And um, that was just such a, a beautiful time in my life in, in understanding humanity and sexuality and the combination of those two. Uh, and then I went back and did my doctorate and completed that in 2012. So that's who I am. Um, you can call me Stephen. You don't have to call me Dr. Stephen. Um, I use that if I'm calling like a credit card company or something like that. But when I'm here with you, you can just call me Stephen and that's fine. If you do have questions, please put them in. I'll try and cover them. If I don't, I'll get back to you afterwards. But Dr. Tara, if I could ask you to kind of monitor that and if there's some questions that come up and we have some time, I'd be happy to answer those. So with that being said, um, one of the areas that I'm so passionate about and I think there's such an opportunity for growth is um, women owning and stepping in to their sexual power and owning that voice and using that voice. So for too long, women have been suppressed, have been silenced and have been shamed about being sexual beings. I mean, myself as a man, I still remember when, you know, I started dating women and they would share what they were interested in sexually with me. And it was like, for me, it was like difficult. I was like, what? Like, you're not supposed to, this is supposed to be like, as a man, I'm supposed to be doing this. You, you think this way too? You want this way? You, like, and it was just so strange for me. And that's like a microcosm of what happens, I think, on a, 
on a much broader scale for women. Now, the positive thing is things are changing. You know, if we can look back to um, some of the kind of the watershed moments of like just even in media. So if we look at um, Sex in the City, if we look at the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon, if we look at the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement, women stepping into and owning who they are sexually and not being ashamed of it, not being, not being ashamed of advocating and setting boundaries for themselves is so, so important. But today I want to talk about what you can do and mindset. One of the things that I focus on is sexual mental health. You may not have heard that term before, not a lot of people have, but it's how we think about ourselves sexually. How we think about sex. You may have seen the social media post on Instagram that one of the things that I say is sex happens between your ears before it happens between your legs. And so often you have negative comments, negative critiques, negative thoughts about yourself, about sex, about sexuality, about your partner, your partners, that actually continue that cycle of suppression and don't let you step in and own who you are sexually. Now, a lot of the work that I do in, in the Sex Life Unleashed is going back and unpacking and looking at what I call your sexual blueprint. So a lot of things that um, shape your sex and what sex looks like for you today have been impacted by experiences, form, what I call formative instances, instances, excuse me, so things that you saw, things that you uh, were told, or things that you experienced yourself. And we carry that baggage with us to our lives. And what we also do is we pass it on to our kids. So some of the baggage that we carry is from our parents, and they got that from their grandparents and their great-great-grandparents. And so what I'm really impassioned about is having people, having women put that baggage down and then be free to express themselves in the world. So the first point I want to share with you, now you've probably shaken your head and be like, Stephen, I know, but I'm just going to say it. Women are sexually superior to men. That's it. And I say this to men and they get all up in arms because it kind of flips what we've been told or what at least men have been told, where in the world, men have been given more permission to be sexual and women have been given more permission to be emotional. The reality is we are a complex combination of all those factors, but women are sexually superior. Right? So if we look at the, the human body, so women can have multiple orgasms. The vagina is an organ of potential, so it expands and contracts as the need is. And as you age, like, you know, men, we tapped out when we were like 18. We're not trying to play catch up. As women, you have this beautiful energy inside of you that continues to evolve and grow and develop much, much later than men do. So when you're looking at mindset, and again, this you may have male whatever oh i'm back sorry uh whatever works for you but if you are in a heterosexual relationship like own that you are the sexually superior one in that relationship now don't necessarily bring that up to your partner or tell your partner unless you have that type of relationship but when you're looking at mindset that's the first one is owning who you are as a woman and being the sexually superior gender the second point that i want to share with you is owning the concept of you have a blank check for whatever you want sexually. And you're probably sitting there, I'm like, great, that sounds great, Stephen, I love blank checks, fill it out. But really, like as a woman, thinking about the things that you want and the things that you need. Again, for so long, women haven't had a voice. You know, I, I talk to women so often and they're like, well, you know, I, I, oh, it's a fascinating conversation I had with this woman. She's like, hey, Stephen, you know what? And I was like, what? She says, I'm, I'm actually having sex because I want to have sex for the first time in my life. This woman was in, she was like 35, but her whole life she had sex because she thought she had to, because this is what women do, or like I'm in a relationship that I have to do it. So I just do it because it's, it's, it's a, 
it's a job for me to do and it's for my partner's pleasure. And so the concept of like looking at things and being like, oh, like I can own this and this is, feels good for me and this is what I want. So having a blank check. Now the work that I do in the Unleash program is how do you fill in that blank check and actually be able to cash it, right? Take it to the bank. That's really important. Um, but it's, it's really like, it's, again, if you're partnered, great. You know, most people, when they are partnered, they get in a, what I call a sex dance. So you think for yourself, when I say this, you know, there's probably something that you do to initiate sex, maybe something that you say, or something that you do, or a way that you touch your partner. And that leads to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, right? Or if your partner initiates, they say something or do something or touch you in a particular way. And that leads to that next thing, that next thing, that next thing. And we get really kind of focused in that funnel of like, oh, it's sex time. We're going to pull that trigger and then it goes down in this direction, right? And it doesn't have to be that way. You have a blank check. One of the things that I want to um, offer this community is uh, it's a gift. You don't have to uh, fill out an email or anything else like this. I'm not building my list with you. But if you go to my website, which is drdewitt.com, so D-R-D-E-W-I-T.com, and click on something that says sex menu, that's my gift to you. And what that is, it's a list of 256 different ways that you can sexually express yourself and connect with a partner. Now there's like, uh, it's in a levels of spiciness. So there's mild, medium, and hot. Um, and then there's different peppers that go with it. But it's an opportunity for you. And again, if you don't have a partner, cool. This is about developing your sexual self-awareness. The most important, the most valuable, the most reliable sexual relationship you'll ever have in your entire life is the one you have with yourself. It's the one that you were born with, that you started with, and quite frankly, the one that you're going to end with. So understanding that about yourself is really important. So drdewit.com and just click on sex menu, download it. It's my gift to you. But that's something where you can go through by yourself and fill it out. And there's um, columns where you can check off whether you've had experience or not in that. Willingness, which is zero, which is like, oh, hell no, I don't want that, Stephen. What are you talking about? There's going to be stuff that you're going to be like, oh, my God, I want that yesterday. How do I do that? So zero is going to be like, I don't want it. Five is going to be like, yes, I do want that. And then there's going to be notes and nuances. So what you can do if you do have a partner, you fill it out, they fill it out, and then you come together and you can share that. Or if you're single, totally cool. Keep that for yourself. And then when you do have a partner, get them to fill it out. And that facilitates a conversation of like, what are you going to fill in in that blank check? Okay. For those of you who are single, holla at you. It is an amazing time to be single and challenging given it's COVID. So how are you meeting people? How are you connecting with people? But as a single woman, I encourage you when you are looking to date or you are looking for um, a hookup or a one night stand or a lifetime partner, whatever it is, there's no judgment here, is you have that conversation and you advocate for yourself early on in the relationship about what your sexual needs are and practice using your sexual voice. Because I work with women who've been you know, married for 25 years and they've never told their partner that they haven't had an orgasm before. Or they've never told their partner, better yet, of like what actually allows them to orgasm and allows them to release and share that really sacred time with one another. So use the sex menu, it's for you. And think of like, hey, I have a blank check. How do I fill that out? How do I own that power? Um, one of the other things that's there, and I just want to be responsible for time, is looking how we allow ourselves and you allow yourself to evolve and to change sexually. So as human beings, we're like, we're going to go through lots of different jobs. I don't know, there's five different careers or whatever. Um, our bodies are going to change and evolve as we get older. But our sex is very, for a lot of people, just very narrow and focused. And this is what it has to be. And if it doesn't look like what it was five years ago, or if it doesn't look like what it was when I was 20 years ago, I don't know about you guys, but I don't look like I look like I was when I was 20 years ago. I've um, lost a few things and gained a few things. I've gained a few pounds and lost some hair, right? But we change. 
and our sexuality changes. So the third mindset piece is thinking about evolving and having a growth mindset about sex. And what I mean by that is what honors you and what works for you and your body now doesn't have to be what it was five years ago or 10 years ago. And be open that it may change in five years, in 10 years, in a year, in a month. And the thing that turns you on, it gets you excited, gets you wet, gets you want to have that connection, wants you to have that sex, could be different. And be open to that and be kind to yourself. Because again, the number one sexual relationship is the one that you have with yourself. It's the conversations that you have in your head, that constant montage of words and things that have gone on and you want to start interrupting the negative ones and start substituting the really positive and powerful ones. So you can continue to have that amazing sex life way, way, way into the future. And there are things for specifically for women that you'll go through as far as um, motherhood, as far as, um, you know, aging that has an impact in society it says well if you're this age or if you're a mom you got to focus on this and listen i get after having kids and exhaustion and hormones and what your body goes through and there's an impact there on your sex life that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the mental part of it of like oh i need to put this away or pack this away you don't have to and you know the age bit um you know it's so funny i always ask this question is like how many people want to think about two 90 year olds having sex probably not a lot of hands went up or people that are like, yeah, Stephen. And listen, if that's your jam, cool. But how many of you want to have amazing sex when you're 90 years old? More hands probably went up. So reconstructing that sexuality of like, my body has to look this way. I have to think about sex this way. I have to be a particular way sexually because society or the messages that I receive said, this is sexual and it's okay for me as a woman to be sexual now. But as my body looking like this, or my, I, I'm a mom, or I have kids, or I'm focused on my career, whatever, then I can't. No, none of that. Have that growth mindset, have that mindset of evolving and growing constantly in your life, and that will serve you well in your life. Um, I'm going to hit pause there because I'm one minute over my time, um, but thank you. If you have questions, um, please let me know. If you are interested in the Unleashed program, um, what you can do is you can just on Instagram DM, DM me and just write Unleashed or email me and just write Unleashed, and then I can get back to you and let you know more about that. Um, but that's all my time, unless there's questions. Dr. Tara, thank you for letting me, sh again, share this sacred space. Um, and with that, I'm complete. Oh, wow. I mean, I think this is such an important topic that has not been talked about enough. And so I feel like we can, we can set this up weekly and just explore this further. Um, it is so important. And I was thinking as you were speaking, sex begets sex hormones. And yeah. I sort of said that they both go hand in hand. And when you feel you're thriving internally with your relationship with yourself, your sex hormones will thrive too, and your sex life will thrive. Um, so it just goes hand in hand and build confidence and all the things we've talked about, inner glow, outer glow. Um, so the philosophy at Higher Health, Stephen, is love, thrive, grow. And what you spoke about today just fits right in line with that. I love it. And I'm sure people will be contacting you and looking up your spicy menu, which that sounds like <laughs> me as well. Um, so thank you again. And um, I can't wait to have a, a personal interview with you that we'll also share on our YouTube chat line. We'll, we'll be digging deeper into this topic. Um, as it applies to mindset and higher health. So I posted that YouTube link in the, in the chat as well as Dr. DeWitt's website. We'll continue to provide these resources. And um, so it's gift time and I will say this super quick and we can go on our day and Stephen, you can go kiss your birthday girl. Um, so we have Deanna McConey. Sorry, I just brought you up to give a wave. Deanna is our Pilates practitioner. She's also a Qigong um, medical practitioner and a canine massage therapist. Uh, she's just the best. And she has offered tonight a Pilates class at 530 complimentary for everyone in the sisterhood. So if you've 
if you're curious to get your radiant energy circuits going further, I'm sure you will get that going in Pilates as well. Um, so we will share those, that info with you and you can DM us as well in case we can't communicate it um, in time. So 5.30 tonight. And then Lisa Novambra, our Ashtanga yoga practitioner, who we're sharing our movement pieces further. Um, Lisa is going to be doing an ongoing yoga class on seven or on Wednesdays at 7.30, where she will actually teach you how to do sun salutations that we've talked so much about, and we will build on your yoga practice. So if you're curious at all, that is also free to you as sisters and our growing movement, we'll call it. And then the last gift is the Qi hormone test, which I got the email today saying they, they can donate a complimentary test. And in thinking how I would award this test to the winner, I would, I would love for you to email me your hormone symptoms, any symptoms, it can be very simple, hot flashes, headaches, you know, doesn't have to be elaborate. Just it's to get your ballot in the draw so that we will draw a name from the, those emails and you will, we will contact you about your, your free Qi kit. And if you have questions for any of us, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, again, we have our YouTube channel, we have our higher health community, we have a growing sisterhood of awesomeness, and now we have a brother in the sisterhood. And I hope you have an awesome day. And Olga, can you just say those three words again to send people off? I'm unmuting you. You might be busy with someone at the front desk. So we said nourishment, bonding, and life, right? Did I get them all? Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Sisters. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>